G'day guys. Um, somebody asked me a question about what's happened to the flu and things like that. And I thought I'd do a bit of an investigation, just find out what's happening out there. Um, let me just share my screen. Because even sort of common colds and stuff like that uh, are sort of much lower currently. So this is the CDC site. Human coronavirus types. So we've got all these. These are all the your common cold um, uh, types. They all have these sort of funny numbers. Um, 229E, alpha coronavirus. And these are basically respiratory infections um, uh, as well, like the SARS, COVID-2, COVID-1. So these are the other ones, which are in more recent times, which we know as the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS. Uh, that was the first, you know, severe acute respiratory syndrome, which was SARS, COVID-1, as it's called now, and the new one, which is, we know as C19. So, these ones, most people get infected, you know, on and off continuously um, in that regard. So, and, the, and uh, these are the most mutagenic. That means they mutate so much. Um, the common cold is going to be around for a very, very long time. Let's put it that way. And it can manifest itself in different ways, in different severities, depending on how sick you, you know, you've been and stuff like that. So these are the sort of influenza types. Um, so that's what it looks like. The outer coating. So it's got corona type characteristics, the flu, even though we don't classify it within that family because it doesn't relate to that family directly. Um, it does have similar characteristics in the way it binds and everything else. So some call it part of the general family specifically, you know, but it still is like the common cold and like the other ones, SARS and, and MERS and all that. It is respiratory in nature. So they are pretty much very similar in that regard. And we usually have four types, A, B, C, and D. So, and in different years, um, one is more dominant than the other that has outcompeted the others. So the human season influenza viruses. So you've got the key ones, which is the A and B. And these are all these subgroups and all that. Now they, some can move into, um, uh, into basically animals. And so they tend to be able to, you know, they've sort of been tender then like bird flu and other and swine flu, they can be, they can find different hosts. So they don't only infect us, they infect certain animals and they can literally move back and forward between us and those animals. So the, um, those sort of types um, of influenza, they'll be around for a long time. They'll be popping in and out um, and you're never going to really get rid of them very successfully. They tend to be a bit more mutagenic and a bit more adaptive in the way they um, can find other hosts to survive. Now, this is the one that I'm actually going to talk about. This does not have a sub um, uh, clads, you know, subgroups. Um, uh, and this is the one that they're saying has bit the bullet. So, so Doherty Institute, I've actually done, a, you know, this is the Melbourne, University of Melbourne and the Royal Melbourne Hospital. So this is one of the most prestigious universities in Australia. 
So it's one of the top ones in most of the most in a lot of fields, including medicine. So they've basically been looking um, at this and they've said, has um, COVID pandemic driven a flu strain extinct? Oh, that one there, the B Yama Gata. So according to two studies from the Dalton Institute in Melbourne, one of the four influenza virus types that every year circulate amongst humans may might have gone extinct thanks to C19 pandemic. Um, so they, there's a study that's been put out. Um, so that's a study there. I am not going to go through this study. Okay, there's quite a bit involved. If people want to look at the, look at it, they can do that in their own. So we can keep this video as tight as possible. And so they've basically um, talk, been talking about it. So Dr. Marios Kutsakos, um, a Greek Australian, a researcher at the Department of Microbiology and Immunology at the Doherty Institute, and one of the authors of the published study said that it's highly unusual that B. Yamamata has not been detected in over 18 months. It's difficult to say with certainty, but that indicates it may have gone. So this is, has happened in other things, in other things in the past. So we have had extinctions. In most cases, it's been through really a strategy of containment, you know, where you, but that's never been with a, with a coronavirus or a flu type virus, which are, tend to be more mutagenic. So this will be the first of the, what I call classify the mutagenic types of viruses that tend to basically circumvent <laughs> certain things. But, you know, maybe it, um, uh, it got crowded out by, you know, because you've got the other strains that are still around. They've detected them here and there um, uh, in, haven't been as in the same level of concentration. And I suspect the reason for that is because of a lot of the lockdowns. Um, one thing that, um, you know, that probably the lockdowns did is they, and isolation, they limited the ability for flu to get around and the common cold to get around. But in particular, the flu, um, the common cold can actually um, be transmitted much easier um, where the flu um, is a bit harder. That's why we don't get you know, the same numbers like we get with a common cold. More people get infected with a common cold every year and far less get infected with the flu. Um, so the common cold still out competes the flu in that regard. The flu tends to be a bit more severe, um, especially in immunocompromised people and people that are older, frailer, and stuff like that. But it's quite interesting that uh, you know um, that we haven't seen it anywhere detected. We've detected all the others in a number of different people um, in hospital settings where we've actually done, where this one hasn't appeared anywhere in the last eighteen months. Now, and the other thing is. This isn't one of those that um, can easily harbour. So when we were looking at some of the others, so uh, two types um, of influenza A and B cause seasonal epidemics every year, each include two subtypes, which is the ones that we looked at earlier, um, jump jump from human to animal causing epidemics like as swine flu and bird flu. B. Victoria and B. Yama, Yama Gata don't have an animal reservoir. So those two, which are the B ones, this lineage here, they don't have an animal reservoir. And so that's why influenza is more common you know, can actually move back and forward. This one doesn't. And it looks like this, this branch of influenza B may have gone extinct since we haven't seen it anywhere been detected globally now. 
nobody's actually come up with, you know, this one's been detected, that one's been detected, and even this one's been detected far less, but this one, nowhere. So anybody can go and check this, um, the research on this, what they've done and all that. So it's quite interesting. So there may be, even though, you know, COVID has actually had a lot of, caused a lot of problems, but it's more due to the mismanagement by governments and less to do with the actual virus itself. But the silver lining there may be that it's taken out one of the um, influenza strains. So possibly um, 18 months is a very long time not to get any detection, not even one. Um, and, uh, you know, if we look at other vaccines where, you know, non-mutagenic types where we've vaccinated and eliminated them completely, they've got, you know, they're only held in labs, um, certain types. The potential is that the same thing could have happened to this one. Now, I don't know with certainty, 100%, um, you know, but there's a possibility that uh, one may have bitten the bullet um, uh, permanently. So quite interesting. Anyway, um, I thought I'd give a bit of a review on what's happening on the, on the you know, flu side and the common cold side in that regard. Um, well, the other one numbers are down on the other ones. The amount of common cold is more, it, the numbers are much higher, um, but flu, the other strains are quite lower uh, being detected around the world uh, in hospital because hospitals have been checking for the, those as well. A number of hospitals, not everywhere as diligently, but they have been. Um, but it, it seems very strange that we haven't had one detection of uh, this variant, I suspect, may have bit the bullet. I'm not going to say with a definite certainty, but 18 months of zero detection is quite a long period of time. Now, obviously, we would have to wait for at least five years to seven years to really be 100% certain. And if we don't see anything in the next you know, couple of years, it's bit the bullet. Simple as that because there's no way, first of all, it doesn't harbor in animals, you know? So influenza B just does not. So if it doesn't harbor in animals and we're not getting any detections within the human population, you know, it's pretty much kick the bucket. You know, there's one other possibility and that is a possibility where it's jumped to, a, to another species and by jumping to that species, it has altered itself in such a way where it can't jump back to us. So it's actually taken, it's looked for a different host, found a different host and adapted to that host and unadapted to us. Um, that can happen. Viruses can do that, can emerge in one species, move to another species, adapt to that species and cease to be adapted to another to a species because they're having greater success in this species. So they're exploiting that species. So that can happen. Maybe that happened. It'll be interesting to find out whether they find it in other species or not in the future or whether it's really kicked the bucket. Potentially could have could have happened. So very interesting. Yes. One down, many to go. Anyway, um, uh, I hope you found it a bit amusing, informative, just on the peripheral side. It's probably, um, you know, not uh, something of uh, great importance um, to most of you, but uh, it's sort of interesting how these things can go in a one direction or another direction. Always fascinating for those who are interested in this sort of stuff. Anyway, see you.